So we are trying to answer several questions, right? The questions we have answered so far is how do we approximate a derivative with arithmetic? And we did that, and we showed that after we approximate, we can solve these equations on a computer. The next question is how much error does this approximation cause? And we know, we see from the screen that if we use a larger n, we'll have less error, right? The solution is more accurate, but uh, it takes more time. I mean, if we use n equal to 1,000, it takes actually a lot more time if we use OD45. And uh, uh, so can we, how can we analyze from a mathematical point of view how much error does the approximation cause? So we can do that uh, from uh, using, again, Taylor series analysis. So this time, in order for us to figure out how much error it causes, we have to keep a little bit more terms in the Taylor series. So we want to figure out what's the difference between ui plus 1 minus ui minus 1 minus 2ui divided by delta x squared. What's the difference? from actually the second order derivative at xi, right? If, like what we did on Monday, we only keep the constant term, the first derivative term, and the second derivative term, we will see that the difference is going to be zero or negligible, right? But that is because we have neglected all the terms that are third order, proportional to the third derivative, proportional to delta x cubed, and later. So in order to figure out how accurate the solution is, we are going to be keeping some other terms. So the analysis goes as follows. First of all, we want to figure out what is the term uh, un plus 1. So we'll keep the factor here, and what's inside is un plus 1. So un plus 1 by Taylor series analysis is equal to ui plus delta x times the first derivative at xi, I'm just going to not write that, plus the second order derivative, plus the third order derivative, this is 6 because it's 3 factorial, plus the fourth order derivative, 24, it's 4 factorial, plus the fifth order derivative, okay, I'm just going to stop here. All right, so it can keep going forever, right? Okay, now let's figure out the ui minus 1 term. Oh, here is plus, I'm sorry. Yeah, here is plus. Okay, so plus the, the ui minus 1 term is also 1 over delta x squared. Also ui, but here is minus delta x. Here is plus delta x squared times the same derivative at the same location. And minus delta x cubed. plus delta x quad. Okay, I'll stop here. Now, we have uh, the third term minus 2 over delta x squared times ui. That we keep as it is because we want to expand all the quantities as the values and derivatives at ui. And now, the fourth term here is minus the second order derivative of x. So I'm going to write these terms here. It is equal to, look at the first column, it cancels, right? 1 over delta x squared, 1 over delta x squared, minus 2 delta x squared, over delta x squared, cancels. Second term, cancels. Third term, we have plus half, plus half, both divided by delta x squared, so this delta x squared cancel. Then we have minus 1, so this also cancels. Supposed to be, right? Okay, this cancels, 1 plus 1 minus. Everything cancels. No, this doesn't cancel, right? The first term that doesn't cancel is the leading term in the error of the finite difference approximation. So here, we find out that this is the first term that does not cancel. So, this is going to be the term that is primarily, primarily responsible for the finite difference approximation error especially when delta x is small.
right? When delta x is big, uh, who knows whatever, right? I mean, there is not much you can say when delta x is big. But when delta x is small, you know whatever term is left behind should be small compared to the delta x to the fourth term. And that is going to be primarily responsible for the error. So it's going to be 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0. Now plus I have uh, uh, both are divided actually by delta x squared. So I have delta x squared here. And I have uh, uh, over 24 plus over 24 is over 12. OK, plus I'm going to write O delta x cube. Because whatever that is left behind is going to be proportional to delta x fifth at least. And divided by delta x squared, it's on the order of delta x cube. Yes? Uh, can you explain again why the uh, delta x squared over 2 cancels? Delta x squared over 2 yeah, cancels? The third term cancels because of this. Okay. Because we are looking at the difference between the finite difference approximation and the true second order derivative. Mm -hmm. This is minus the true second order derivative. Yeah. So if you look at the two halves, they are both divided by delta x squared, so the delta x squared terms cancels, and the two halves add together to be 1. So yeah. minus 1 and get 0. Right. All right. So we know that the approximation error is, first of all, it's going to be dependent on how the fourth derivative of u is like. And it is proportional to delta x squared over 12. Uh, 